Today on Supreme Court Saturday, we're putting the fun in border wall funding. In a move that shocked Congress, the Supreme Court released a decision halfway through their three month summer break. But you could definitely tell that this was a vacation decision because the final product was two and a half pages. I'm surprised it didn't end with the line sent via iPhone. Now most of their decisions read like a John Steinbeck epic, so this was relief. What did the decision say? Well, you've probably heard, but roll the clip. The high court says it will lift a lower court freeze on nearly two and a half billion dollars in Pentagon funds. The money will be used to replace existing fencing along the Mexican border with Arizona, California, and New Mexico. The money is part of the 8.1 billion the president gained potential access to by declaring a national emergency. So let's dig right into the Supreme Court case of Trump v. the legal juggernaut that is the Sierra Club. Wow, did not see that one coming. Now I'm going to work backwards from the decision that was just released to explain exactly what's going on here. The first thing you'll probably notice is, well, this is definitely not a decision to the overarching issue, and saying it gives Trump access to these funds is a pretty big gross oversimplification of what just happened. The truth? Well, it's a lot less clickbaity. The border wall funding case has turned into a bit of a legal turducken. You have the overarching question of whether the administration has the right to take those funds for the border wall, and then you have the case that was decided today, just shoved right up in there. The Supreme Court was looking at the more limited yet equally important question of, in a 5-4 ruling, the court overturned an appellant decision and said that the administration could tap the money while litigation over the matter proceeds. Now, that might sound like the exact same thing to you, but let me translate that into American. What the court just said is, while we try to figure out whether this is actually an emergency and whether Trump can actually do this, should he have access to those funds? Now, most of you are thinking about this within the context of a border wall, because, well, that's what we're talking about. But legally speaking, this has more to do with an emergency declaration in general. For liberals who are having a little bit of trouble swallowing this decision, imagine if instead, say, Puerto Rico was destroyed by another hurricane. The president declares a state of emergency, and the Republican equivalent of the Sierra Club, say the NRA, sues and says, nah, fake emergency. Do you think the president should have access to those funds while the courts figure out exactly what's going on? This decision was written by America's most forgettable Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. It was in response to two months ago when... On the immigration front, another federal judge issuing another preliminary injunction, this one blocking the president's plans to build sections of a border wall with money the president tried to get by declaring a national emergency. So there were two questions that the Supreme Court had to answer in this decision. First, did the Sierra Club have legal standing to block funds from going to the border wall? Because again, it's an environmental nonprofit, a group that's not exactly on the front lines of either immigration reform or government budget responsibility. And second, will blocking access to these funds until the courts figure out exactly what's going on here irreparably harm the federal government? So first, let's talk about legal standing. Can the Sierra Club even sue the government over this? Well, in the broadest terms, you can only sue someone if what they're going to do affects you. Basically, if I'm reading a newspaper and I see that some guy in Ohio is building a fence one foot over onto his neighbor's property, I can't say, well that guy sounds like a jerk, I'm gonna fly over there and take him to civil claims court. Expanding that a little bit, the federal government is building a wall on the US-Mexico border, and the Sierra Club needed to find out how to connect that issue to them. Luckily, they do have a claim that was deemed valid. If we grant stay, the government may begin construction of a border barrier that would cause irreparable harm to the environment, and to respondents, according to both respondents and the district court. Bet you did not expect that a major part of this debate was going to be about the environmental impacts of a border wall. So in this case, Justice Breyer was saying, if we give the government the money while the courts are discussing exactly what's going on here and whether we can give the government money, that would irreparably harm the environment. So they do have the legal standing to say we can't do this. So now to the other side. If we block the funds until a decision is made, will it harm the government? 
The argument here is equally probably what you weren't expecting. Some of you may remember an old pop song called See You in September. I won't sing it. The idea of this song was a joyful reunion in the fall. But if you use that same phrase in Washington right now, it sounds more like a warning or even a threat. The federal government has a countdown clock to September 30th because that's when fiscal year 2019 ends. This means that if we instead deny the stay, however, it is the government that may be irreparably harmed. The government has represented that if it is unable to finalize the contracts by September 30th, then the funds at issue will be returned to the treasury and the injunction will have operated, in effect, as a final judgment. The actual court case that's overarching here over determining whether this is an emergency right now is definitely going to be in the courts way past September. So if you block the funds from being used until we figure out whether the government can use them, well, all of that is going to be returned to the treasury to be reallocated in the fiscal budget 2020. So this entire debate would have been an act of futility and the government lost because the defense ran the clock. So when the question of irreparable damage to the environment comes up against irreparable damage to the government, whose interests do you think reign supreme? The U.S. Supreme Court has allowed Donald Trump's administration to use $2.5 billion to build his promised wall along the Mexico border. Yeah, who could have seen that one coming? The government's Solicitor General Noel J. Francisco put it best, or dickiest, when he wrote, the plaintiff's interests in hiking, birdwatching, and fishing in designated drug smuggling corridors do not outweigh the harm to the public from halting the government's efforts to construct barriers to staunch the flow of illegal narcotics across the southern border. So there you have it. The government has access to the funds during the period where we need to figure out whether they have access to the funds. But if the administration loses the overarching case of whether this is an emergency, the funds will be snapped up just in time for another wall-based government shutdown for fiscal year 2020. Now while conservative and liberal-leaning justices, for the most parts, were split on the issue, Breyer was on the fence. Or shall we say, on the wall, writing a little passive-aggressive jab at the end of the decision. I find no justification for granting the stay in full as the majority does. I would grant the government's application only to the extent that the injunction prevents the government from finalizing the contracts or taking other preparatory administrative action, but leave it in place insofar as it precludes the government from dispersing those funds or beginning construction. I accordingly would grant the stay in part and deny it in part. Wow, way to call out your co-workers like that in front of everybody. Basically, they can sign the contracts, but they can't break ground on new construction until we figure out the legality of this situation. Now, it doesn't really matter what he thinks because he's in the minority, but I just thought it was an interesting potential compromise to protect both the environment and governmental interests. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the legal arguments of the day, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.